Welcome to Interstellar. Now this movie might be confusing to some, but worry not, because your boy with his outstanding single digit IQ is here to give you the lowdown on the shit to the whiteboard. Okay, so important things to know in this movie are that the Earth is dying, okay? It's currently getting fucked by blight and dust. Or maybe blight and dust are the same thing, I'm not too sure. But anyway, this blight's some nasty shit, only allowing a certain decreasing types of crops to grow, and fucking up the air and humans along with it. Now in this movie, all dumbass humans have basically stopped all scientific research and engineering advancements, you know, all the type of shit that might actually help in solving the current predicament. Genius move, right? Anywho, as I said, they were basically renounced science and went full steam ahead in agriculture and farming because according to these two dumb Mass teacher bitches. We don't need more engineers. The world needs farmers. Other things to note are that NASA are still operating in secret and that they found a wormhole near Saturn that leads to a different galaxy with 12 potential new planets. And someone or some fifth dimensional beings put it there for them to use and they sent a bunch of shit in there that we're gonna talk about later. So what about the characters? Well we got Cooper, a super smart ex-NASA pilot that is an engineer but is currently a farmer. Murph, Cooper's daughter who's just as smart as her dada. Tom, Cooper's son who's also smart but not Cooper or Murph smart, more like farming smart. Then we got two Dr. Bands but I'ma call them Alfred and Catwoman, cause why not? They both work for NASA and Catwoman is Alfred's daughter. Then we got two robots, Case and Tarzan, they're pretty dope. Now onto the actual movie, and the first thing we see is a bookshelf and Murph's zoom, and this is also a very important thing in this movie, so keep that in mind. Then Cooper takes his kids to school, and on the way he lets Murph shift gears for him, which is a super fun thing to do, but he obviously didn't teach her correctly, because when he asks for second, she gives him third. After that, they get a flat tire, and when they get out to fix it, a low-flying drone that's really old flies overhead, and Cooper's like, fuck that tire, bitch, just get in the car, we're going after that shit. Then they drive through some cornfields, hack it, almost off a cliff, land it, then Cooper mentions how it's been flying around for 10 years and that he's gonna use his parts for a smart combine he has on the farm and that it flying so low is super fucking weird bro. After that they get to school presumably very late considering the whole drone thing and the fact that they still haven't fixed that flat tire but whatever there's a parent teacher meeting and Cooper finds out that Tom is farm smart and Murph is also quite smart however she got in trouble for bringing a book that said the moon landing was real but as I said before they're like fuck science but not only that but in their infinite genius they're releasing books saying that the moon landing was communist propaganda or some shit and teaching it to kids and obviously Cooper's like like, I'm trying so he goes home with Murph only to find that his smart combines are malfunctioning, which he claims is also quite weird just like the low flying drone. Not only that, but apparently there's a ghost in Murph's room knocking over books off her bookshelf. And she thinks he's trying to communicate Morse code, but a skeptical Cooper's like, fuck out of here. Then a dust storm hits and the dust makes some weird markings on the floor and after some very close inspection by Cooper, he's like, I say, aha, this ain't no ghost, it's gravity. And these weird markings are coordinates and binary, so he takes Murph and goes over these coordinates to find a still secretly operational NASA with Alfred and Catwoman. And it's right about here where a bunch of information gets dumped out, but no worries, I am here to condense. So basically there's no solution for this blight shit. Eventually it'll not allow any crops to grow and will fuck up air so bad and make people living on earth not be able to breathe it and whatever. That's where the wormhole comes into play. You see, they send 12 people, one to each planet, to study it and see if it has potential or not and send back if it does. And it turns out that three of the planets might be alright. So they want to send some more people to check out which of the three planets is actually bueno so they can send humanity through the wormhole on a giant roll of duct tape that they want to get off the ground using an equation that Alfred is working on ever since he realized that gravity can be harnessed and he hopes he'll have this extra saucy movie science equation ready by the time whoever he's sent comes back. Now that's plan A. Plan B is to fertilize said bueno planet with 5,000 fertilized eggs. How this works, I don't know and I don't care. But I do know that Alfred is telling this to Cooper because he's the most experienced pilot they have and all the other pilots they have only trained on simulators blah 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 and whoever put that wormhole there also must have let him here so it's like fate or some shit so he agrees which really pisses off Murph since she loves her dada and doesn't want him to leave. So they get home and she superman locks herself in the room so he tries to console her with a super low voice like seriously matthew your voice is already low as fuck as is i can't hear shit man anyway after turning on subtitles she tells him that she figured out the ghost's message and it spells stay but he's like nah i gotta go and honestly knowing how this movie ends and re-watching it to make this video i just found myself going why you're not listening no, man, stay. stay you fucking idiot stay Stay. Then he gives her a watch and he's like, Due to the circumstances of space and traveling near black holes and stuff, the time might move differently for us, so let's compare our times on these two watches when I come home, yeah? What the fuck did I do that? Anyway, she's like, fuck your watch, and he leaves, and as he does, the ghost pushes the book off the bookshelf. Like, dude, just fucking stay. Like, really, just stay. I don't even care that you're gonna save humanity eventually. I don't I don't really care. Just stay, man. So Cooper, Catwoman, and two dudes, one named Rami, the other I keep forgetting his name, so I'm gonna call him Hunger Games guy, go up to NASA's last high-tech space station called the Endurance with their last high-tech space craft called the Ranger. So they dock onto the Endurance and spin around real fast to simulate gravity, then they go into hypersleep for two years till they get to Saturn. And let the two dope robots I told you about, Tarzan Case, take care of shit while 
while they're asleep. When they get there, they wake up and go through the wormhole where some weird shit like the fifth dimensional beings shaking Catwoman's hand happens. And that is one sentence I never thought I was gonna say. Moving on, so right now they are on the other side of that wormhole in the other galaxy. And the closest planet to where they are right now is Miller's planet, but they are faced with a small problemo in the form of a giant black hole that Miller's planet is orbiting too close to. So they're forced with a choice, either go to the two farther ones which will take them a lot of years to get to, or go down on this planet where every hour there is seven earth years because of how close it is to the fucking black hole. I ain't no fucking scientist, but if you ask me if any planet is that close to a black hole, it's no bueno. But whatever, they choose to go down to Miller's planet and rescue her and her data and come back up super quick, you know. In and out. Super fast. So Cooper, Catwoman, and Hunger Games guy go down there and leave Rom up on the space station to study the black hole while they're down there. And guess what happens when they get there? They waste a shit ton of time. You see, Miller's planet turns out to be just one giant fucking puddle with massive waves that come crashing over you every five minutes or so, which destroyed Miller's craft when she landed, and Catwoman wastes so much time just going for the useless data for Miller's fucked up ship, directly ignoring Cooper's order to come back to the ship because there's a fucking giant wave about to kill them. So Case goes over to save her while Hunger games guy gets wrecked and they go surfing in their ranger then cooper tries to start up the engine but he can't because they are flooded and he has to wait 45 minutes for the water to drain out of them and cooper wisely uses his time to scold catwoman for wasting so much time trying to retrieve useless data and honestly rightly so because a giant wave that literally touches clouds and kills anything in its path that 100 percent destroyed miller's spacecraft and probably killed her is all the data you need to clue you in on the fact that this is not a habitable planet for humans you dumbass bitch also the only reason Hunger Games guy died is because he took a sweet ass time trying to get back into the ship. He's also a dumbass bitch. So they fire up their engines and get out of there just in time to avoid another giant wave and get up to the Endurance to find a very aged drum because as it turned out they spent 23 fucking earth years down there. And Cooper goes to watch 23 years worth of messages from his family and watching him see his son grow up, get married, have a kid, then have that kid die and watch his son grieve over that kid, then have Murph send him a message for the first time ever is just as gut-wrenching as it sounds. Speaking of Murph, she's all going up and super smart trying to help Alfred solve the equation when she notices that there's something fucked up about it. Like he's been trying to solve it with two arms tied behind his back and I'm not gonna try and explain what it is because I don't fucking know but it, that's what she said. And he's just like, I don't know what you're talking about, I'm an old man, I'm gonna go send a message to my daughter. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at Galaxy wherever the fuck, they waste so much fuel hovering over Miller's planet for 23 years that they only have enough to visit one of the other two planets, Man's planet and Edmund's planet, which is farther but with more promising data, however he stopped transmitting years ago which might mean that his planet is trash or that he just died of natural causes so they go to man's planet which is closer and still transmitting and on their way down to man's planet they graze by a fucking frozen cloud and land and just imagine how lucky they had to be here i mean imagine like there was no gap in the clouds and they thought oh we can just pass through these clouds normally like on earth and just slam straight into one and fucking die yeah, that'd be a pretty shitty movie. Anyway, moving on. They get down there and they wake up Dr. Man from his hypersleep and it turns out to be a very deep and emotional Matt Damon. They tell him that he is their last hope and he starts telling them about his planet which is cold as fuck and he can only breathe its air for two minutes before you fucking die on this crust or like icing layer of the planet. This is not the surface and he promises him that there is a surface and it has breathable air and can support life and blah 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 blah. And they're obviously stoked for that but then they get a message from Planet Dirt and it's Murph telling Catwoman that Alfred died and that his equation cannot be solved. The dude was a lying bastard. He just wanted them to execute plan B all along and there was no hope for humans on earth. And then Dr. Man tells him that Alfred knew humans wouldn't work together to save the species and they want to save themselves because of primal instincts and whatever and he knew about the equation that it couldn't be solved or more accurately that it could be solved but it just needs more data. Specifically data from the inside of a black hole which obviously no one can fucking get so they're kind of fucked you know. So Cooper's like fuck this I'm out and he wants to go home and see his kids. So the plan right now is for Cooper to help them set up shop on the surface of this planet for the fertilized eggs and then after that to leave and on the way home through the wormhole to send TARS with an upgrade apart from Kip, Dr. Man's old TARS-like robot that he decommissioned for very fishy reasons which I don't understand but you know they're fishy into the black hole so he can study the inside of it and hopefully send out the data that he collects back to earth so they have a chance of finishing the equation and save the people. So Dr. Man takes him to a place that will supposedly lead them to the planet's surface so they can set up shop down there and on the way he keeps spewing out some profound deep spiritual survival bullshit and then he flicks off Cooper's radio transmitter and 
and I gotta say, what a shittily designed radio transmitter that it can be flicked off that easily. Anyway, he pushes Cooper off a cliff, fights him, and cracks his visor. You see, Dr. Man is a cunt. He faked all the data so he has a higher chance of people coming and rescuing him, so he can steal one of their ships and go and continue the mission, and there is no surface to this planet and it's all just frozen hell. So he leaves Cooper there to die and makes his way back to the ship so he can steal it and continue the mission, but then by sheer luck, Cooper finds the radio transmitter and he contacts Catwoman and Case for them to fly back with one of the Endurance's spaceships called the Lander, which takes them way too long considering that Dr. Man and him walked here in just a few minutes and Dr. Man's almost all the way back to base, so what the fuck? Anyway, Catwoman arrives just in time before Cooper runs out of oxygen, then Ron blows up when he tried to start up Kip, so they pick up Tars and resume the chase, and go after Man who now is in the Ranger and on his way up to the Endurance, and he arrives there before they do, and he doesn't dock properly and tries to open the hatch by force and get into the space station, while spewing up some more I have to save humanity bullshit, and even the movie is tired of its crap at this point, so it's like, shut the fuck up, seriously, look. This is about all mankind. There is a moment. Shut the fuck up. So by doing that, man dies and fucks up a giant chunk of the Endurance and sends it spinning down into the shitty planet's atmosphere. But Cooper's like, not today, motherfucker. And in the most butt-clenching scene of the movie, he goes full send underneath the space station, matches his spin with its rotation, docks properly and pushes it out of the planet's atmosphere. However, they're not out of the woods yet because they're going directly into the black hole. But Cooper, being the smart man he is, knows he's fucked and he can never go home. So he decides to let the black hole suck him in just a bit and line them up for the third planet, use all their fuel, detach the lander and their last ranger with him and Tars in each to shed weight and hopefully all that will be enough to let Catwoman and Case escape the black hole's gravity and shoot them towards the last planet. So he does that and sacrifices himself for the greater good. The greater and gets sucked straight into that black hole but doesn't die. Instead he starts falling through all moments in time in one specific place and that place is boom behind the bookshelf in Murph's bedroom. And he sees himself leaving that day and he knocks over the books in the Morse code pattern of stay. That's right he's the fucking ghost boys. And Tara starts talking to him. He got the data but he can't send it out of the fucking black hole cause it's a fucking black hole. So Cooper writes the coordinates of super secret NASA in binary in the dirt so he can come here in the first place. Then he tells Tars to feed him the data in Morse so he can code it into the second hand of the watch that he gave to Merv who went back to her room and found out that the watch is the answer and that Cooper is her ghost because she just felt it in her bones, you know? And she's able to solve the equation like, Eureka, motherfuckers! Then the place he's in starts shutting down and he travels back through the wormhole and shakes Catwoman's hand. That's right, he's the fifth dimensional being, or not him, but like super advanced future humans who put that wormhole there and let him do all that black hole shit and I don't really understand this part, but hey, he wakes up on Cooper Station, yay! Which is a giant toll paper roll that Merv got off Earth with her now working equation. Then he goes to see his 114 year old daughter, steals a spaceship, and goes looking for Catwoman. <sighs> My brain hurts. This movie's way too smart for me. I have brain damage. Anyway, pie squared out of a Buzz Lightyear.